train is coming through this place. And get on that train is coming through this place. And get on that train is coming through this place. He's coming through here real soon. So we're getting ready, getting ready right now. We're getting ready, yes, we're getting ready now. We're getting ready, oh, we're getting ready now. Cause he's coming through this place real soon. So pack your bag and get ready to go. Pack your bag and get ready to go. Pack your bag and get ready to go. He's sending people out everywhere. We got a harvest coming in, so get ready to go. A harvest coming in, so get ready to go. The harvest coming in, so get ready to go. Get ready to go with our king. He's sending people out now. He's sending them everywhere. He's sending people out. He's sending them everywhere. He's sending people out. He's sending them everywhere. So get ready. He's sending you. He's going to send you to the people in your neighborhood. He's sending to the people in the shopping center. He's sending you to the people everywhere. So get ready. The Lord's coming soon. We got to go out and get that harvest right now. We got to go out and bring the harvest in right now. We got to go out and bring that harvest in now. So get ready, my people, let go. He's sending you out somewhere. He's sending you out somewhere. He's sending you out somewhere. You out somewhere. So get set the stars in place and he's put us in a place. How many feel that this morning? Hallelujah. Put you in a place to know him. The prosper means to know him. You know, a lot of people have it on other ideas. But to prosper is that your soul may prosper. That's Amen. the scripture. Amen. That your soul prosper. Hallelujah. And then he'll add all those things unto you. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. The CEO is the head because he's worked his way up the ladder. He started in the beginning, and God said, in the beginning, hallelujah, so shall it be in these days as it was in the days of Noah. I want you to catch that this morning. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be before the coming of the Lord. Study 
study the flood, study the ark. You know, there's a flood of things in the world right now. And it's all not of God. But I tell you, God's getting ready to open up his gates. <laughs> he's going to open up his gates. And he said, I got an ocean. You got a flood, I got an ocean. I got the knowledge of who I am and I'm about to cover the earth with it. Don't you love that? Come on, get your hopes high. He said, I'm going to cover the earth as the waters covers the sea. When it's covered, that means you don't know the depth of what God's going to do. Come on, let your imagination run away with you this morning. You don't know the depths of what God is going to do. But we know our God. Hallelujah. Yeah. We know our God. We know he can do it. Right. And he said, Let, put a praise upon your mouth. Yes. Glory to God. Your tongue is like a pen of a ready writer. A ready writer. Did you hear me? It's going to announce the things of God before he's coming. There's a herald hurling in the newspaper and on the news before the president comes to town. But I tell you, he's got the trumpets going to be heard all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to sound his coming. Amen. And we're the same type of people that he's coming to our heart, coming to our life. And there's a sound of eternity in us. God wants us to release that sound. The eternal purposes of God are in our mouths. And when we begin to make that sound, did you know that every word and every song that's sung... That sound goes out and it continues eternally moving. So sing the new song. Sing the good song. Sing the song that exalts him this morning. Put your hands to the Lord. I mean, that's victory right there. <laughs> victory in Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! I saw eagle's wings when some of you lifted your hands. I saw like angel wings come out of your back and on your side. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I tell you, the presence of the Lord is going to come in many ways. You know, if you take a diamond ring and it's a real diamond, it's got the colors that surround the throne in it. It's precious. And it's valuable. Hallelujah. And every way that you, every time you turn it, you see those new colors. And God says, every time you turn toward me, you'll see an area of me that you have not seen before. Amen. Glory to God. Just give him that hidden place in your life. Give it to him. Yes. All those things you think I can't surrender, just surrender. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. Surrender it all unto him. Yes. Because what he has is more than we can ever give him. Glory to God. More than we can ever give him. So let there be a praise. I mean, I just let thunder come out of my house this morning. I put on Jerry McCallum again. He's an anointed singer. And he's singing that song, To Know Your Grace, To Know Your Ways. That's my desire. Come on. To Know Your Glory, To Know Your Grace. That's my desire. You know what it means to know his grace? He's going to put you in some situations that you're going to know who he is. You're going to understand him. You're going to understand his ways. Now, if you're not going through that, I'm going to pray that you will. Hallelujah. Because that's how you know him, is by his grace. Hallelujah. If Jesus went this way, I can go this way. He said, are you going my way? They, he said it before they made the movie. Are you going my way? <laughs> Hallelujah. What other way is there in to go? Our conversation should be yay and amen about the Lord all the time. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. Because he's eternal. You can only say so much about your car, about your new dress. But there's no end to who he is. Come on. Discover him in your spirit. Discover him in your conversation. Discover him in your thinking. Discover him when something doesn't fit right. Say, Lord, I must decrease that this dress will fit me. Hallelujah. That's what John said. I must decrease. Do you know what John was saying? I don't know anything. He's everything. He's everything. God said, I, the Bible says, I want you to ascribe greatness unto me. I mean, Webster's doesn't 
hold all the words. Neither does strong performance. <clears throat> There's no end to him. Hallelujah. There's no end. There's no end. There's new discoveries when you think about him and what he's done. Yesterday, I was thinking about something God did years ago, and all of a sudden, out of my thinking came this revelation. I thought, why did I see that till today? I mean, this happened 25 years ago. Because he has hidden manner in everything that he tells you, every vision and dream. Everything that, every direction that he gives you, he's got a hidden. Now, you want to talk about hidden agenda. He's got it. And he wants us to get in that secret place and discover him. And that song was about praise him in the morning, praise him in the noontime, praise him in the evening. It's not all me and all my, it's wow, hallelujah, W-O-W, wow, wonder of wonders, glory to God. Come on, let the wind blow on you today. The wonders of who he is. And the more you say hallelujah, that means he rides in majesty. The more you are to see the majesty of the king coming into your life. Hallelujah. You know, we study in the Bible to get a sermon. How about studying him? What did he do today? How was it this morning when I got up? I mean, I didn't feel so good. I thought... I just like to call in sick. And then I remembered, he's the healer. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's the healer. Amen. Then I remembered, he makes me feel good. <laughs> Not that Pepsi Cola. <laughs> he makes me feel good. Amen. Paul said, oh, that I might know him. I used to read that and I thought of suffering every time I read it. But then Paul knew him before kings and before magistrates, before nations, before the heathen. Paul knew him. He knew how to describe him. God wants us to describe him. I was thinking this morning about A. Allen. And they're showing a few of his uh, clips. I got rid of my television, so I had to figure out how to get him in touch with him again. And my mother took me to see him when he was when I was a child. He was always excited. I was looking in the mirror this morning in the bathroom. He gets so excited, and then there'd be a lot of these people around him. And but he was the only one who was jumping around. <laughs> and, and I'm sitting there in front of the television. Why are these people as excited as he is? Man, I'd be up there cheering him on. I'd be his best cheerleader. Yeah, that's right. You know. He's explaining God in his testimony. Yeah. You have a testimony of what the Lord did this morning? Hallelujah. Yes. 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 He woke me up. Hallelujah. I'm alive. <laughs> I'm just trying to get you to fall in love with him. Do you so drunk you can't see straight? <laughs> but hey, Alan would be jumping up and down while he was talking. And he looked like he was on fire. But you know, most of the church today looks like water's been poured on. Put the fire out. I tell you, we have something to shout about. Yes, he yes, saved yes. the best for last. He's, look at yourself and say, I'm the best. He saved me for last. Yes. And because why? Because the last shall be first. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You're going to get the revelation of who he is. And so I get up there and I can't move my feet too much, but I'm shaking up the wine. He's so fine. Hallelujah. Now listen, you can't give wine to people to drink if they don't know how to drink it. You know, there's old saying they can't hold their, their water. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! It's so good. All the time. Hallelujah. Last night before I went to bed, I had gold on the top of my hands. I found the gold. I didn't find the mine, I found the gold. I found the one that makes it. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was looking at all these people and 
once in a while some of them, it was all of them that shake their head. I mean, agree with the preacher, for goodness sakes. Amen. Agree with him. God's about to bring those anointings back in the land. If Jeremiah Johnson said, God's telling him that the anointings he's going to pull on women are going to be like Ruth Heffern's anointing. Right on. Come on, you better get yeah. ready. Yeah. 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 That was the word he said just recently. He said, God's about the women now that are coming on the scene. I was so shocked. I was looking at him. Somebody sent it to me on my phone. He said, I believe. I said, yeah, brother, I know what you're talking about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She could just feel the air. She'd feel the wind speaking to her. Feel the spirit speaking to you. Learn how to hear the spirit. Learn. Listen, I'm feeling it right now. Woo! Boy, it's better than wine, too. I'll tell you. Woo! I just feel it. There's nothing like feeling the presence of the Lord begin to move through your physical body. Charging you. Charging you to know Him. And I'm thinking all this this morning. Lord, you've given me a, a freedom. You said you make it not a shame. And I thought, you know, how, how did that happen? Because you live in his truths regardless of, the, regardless of the cost. You live in what is true because truth makes you free. Yes. Makes you free. Yes. I'm dancing to the washing machine one day. True story. Ruth Heffman comes. Well, she didn't go to bed till two o'clock, so I'm washing her dress for her. She only had one, it seemed. And I had to wash it for her. And I had to dress in the washing machine. And that washing machine started to move it, and it had a rhythm to it. You recognize these rhythms. And I'm sitting there moving to the washing machine. And she comes down the hall in her nightgown. She said, What are you doing? I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> Nobody else will enjoy me. I'm enjoying myself. I mean, it's two o'clock in the morning. I better have some energy here. <laughs> we had laughter before laughter was heard. If this brother used to laugh and laugh, and I thought, what does he know that I don't know? <laughs> It gets laid down inside of you like fire. No, yeah. Jeremiah said it's like fire in my bones. I thought I was going to be quiet. Ooh. I don't know how we got on this. Praise him in the morning and praise him in the evening. Amen. Praise him till the sun goes down. Yes. I mean, I thought, boy, we got to get ready according to that music. <laughs> I don't know what you get in the suitcase when Richard was playing. <laughs> 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 but I want to tell you, God's in a hurry. Yes. You got to know that. Yes. The Bible says the king's business requires haste. Yes. Haste. We're going to find a new way to fix our hair and get dressed. Must be some shortcuts. I asked the Lord that. I'm an old timer. I curl my hair. I said, Lord, you got to show me a new way to curl this hair. I don't have half an hour to do it. I don't have an hour to put in my hair and my dress in the morning. The hour's late. Show me how to do it. And he did. He gave me a vision. I thought, oh, I never thought of that. Listen, he said, my thoughts towards you. You need to get out and get a great big notebook and a pen and say, all right, Lord, I want to hear the thoughts. And start writing. I'm talking to you this morning. I'm talking about knowing the Lord. Yeah. Know him. Amen. Know him. Know him in his dealings. Yes. Know him in your prayers. I'm at the breakfast table and I can hardly eat for praising the Lord. So I put that song on. To know your grace and know your ways. I let it play about seven or eight times. I kept, uh, uh, I don't know how to work that machine. I have to make it keep playing. So I kept getting up and putting it back in play. This is the time to know him. Amen. The song said, this is the time. Give me a key of G over there. Oh. <laughs> now follow me. To know your face. To know your grace. 
and your beauty to see your face and all of your glory that's my desire Lord that's my desire to know your face to know your grace in all of your glory you know I gave you a CD to this I want you to find it Okay. I made a copy and gave it to you. Okay. You got it. Those songs are so anointed. To know, let me see if I can, let me sing it first without music, okay? To see your face and your glory. To know your grace. That's my desire. This is my time, my heart's desire to see your face, to know your grace, to see your face and your glory, to know your grace. This is my time, my heart's desire to see your face, my heart's desires. We see his hands, we see his feet, we see the ends of his robe. We see, you know, sometimes he'll let you see his arm. Usually it's hidden. But he's rolling his sleeves up right now. You're going to see his muscles. This is what he said to me this morning. I'm going to uncover the secret parts. I don't know if he went good or bad. I don't know. But he said there's going to be an impending judgment on excesses. sex is a thing. I've been listening to the news on Maui. And a niece, it seemed, was looking for her honor, her grandmother. And they found a few notes here and there that people had left. But she had an excessiveness. And they didn't know if she was caught up in it or not. That's why she didn't get out of the fire. During the volcanic explosion of Pompeii. They found people that turned back to pick up something else and they didn't escape the lava. But as that music was playing this morning, I thought God wants us to get those rhythms and us to move quickly. And listen, the Spirit will move with you. The Bible says that the Spirit is comfortable to you and if we can learn to move quickly, we can catch those movements of God and see what God is doing. I went to the grocery store, what's today? Friday, Tuesday. I needed milk and I don't really like to go out after dark. And it was lightning and I thought, well, the rain won't start for another hour or two and the grocery store is four blocks away. So I jumped in the car. I want to tell you that rain came, listen to this, that rain came. And four inches of rain caught me in the parking lot before I could get out of the car. Wow. Like five minutes. Wow. That's how quickly he's going to come. Now, I'm talking, we're, we're singing all this. What I'm talking about, we were singing this this morning. Don't let anything catch you unaware. All of your praying that you're doing, your reading, your seeking, your fasting, your giving, your sacrifices, it's not in vain, honey. You're preparing. Noah built that ark for 120 years. My goodness, I've grown old by then. 120 years. I wonder if at any time he thought, am I doing this in vain? 
I wonder how many people helped him. They, but they didn't get on. Hallelujah. And I was listening to someone preach on it. And after it was all put together, the Lord said to Noah, put pitch on it. Pitch means repentance and forgiveness. That's what it means. I mean, it doesn't smell so good. It looks so good. And of course, we don't use the same kind of pitch today. But it means, I mean, we don't want to get hard in our spirit about things that are going on. Our heart will get callous and we can't receive and we can't give. I remember someone laid hands on me one of the second to the last days I stayed at camp and I hit the ground there under the tabernacle and I heard the voice of the Lord he said I was wounded in the house of my friends I thought oh I know that scripture he was speaking to me he was trying to tell me something I was getting ready to be wounded I thought oh I know that scripture yeah he said he was wounded in the house of his friends you prepare your honey don't worry these people said they didn't know. Yes, all along he's been speaking. He's letting winds blow. He's letting things happen. <clears throat> that there'll be a happening in our lives. You know, the preachers need to preach more on knowing Jesus. Yeah. You know him. You know he owns it all. <laughs> he might give me some of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he might. Come on, say it. David said, who knows? He might turn. And he might give me a blessing. Yeah. He might. I mean, God's mercies. It's his mercies, honey. It's his mercies. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it'll make you a different person. You'll let the man that cuts in front of you get your parking place. I'm driving mad people this morning. I thought, like, where did you get your driver's license? They were all over the place. This lane, that lane, and then the, you know the suicide lane there. They're, you're supposed to park there. They're moving, you know, until the traffic opens up. I mean, and I thought, what are these people doing? Am I going to get to my prayer meeting? Hallelujah! You're going to get there. Come on, I'm trying to steer you up. Steer you up. God's got a big spoon. And he doesn't lick it either. Hallelujah. He puts it in the recipe of your life. And he starts to stare at you, honey. And you don't think it's so funny when you have to taste it. But wait till it's baked. Glory to God. He said to the woman, bake me a little cake first. He's trying to give her a future, Elijah was. God's trying to give us a future. And a hope. And an assurance that he's wonderful. He's so wonderful. Even when you think it's bad, he's wonderful. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Take the wonder off. You still got full. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> I am free, honey. God has just squashed me so many times. You take the second seat. Take the back seat. Oh, give this up. Give that up. And I knew when people ask of me, and I thought, man, I don't think I'm going to do those things. Mm -hmm. No, you can't say no, because you've already told the Lord, if he goes with you, you're going. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Come on. That's right. You're going. Right. He said that to me in the last two weeks. I've been hearing that song. If Jesus goes with me, I'll go. I thought, where am I going? <laughs> Anywhere. Just heaven to me. Wherever I'll be. If he is there. We're getting ready to experience some moves and calamities in this country. Yeah, yes, yes. <clears throat> Clothe yourself in him in the joys of your salvation. Yeah. Hallelujah. I have a piano in my house and I can go over it up and play it anytime I want to. Amen. Sometimes I hear a little song and I'll get in there trying to find it. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Oh, you lads. Yeah. Oh, you people. I didn't hear anybody say amen. 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 
Hallelujah. I get a personal association with the Lord. friend comes up to me, we're preaching at a revival. And so Fred loves it all times. She said, I saw a new hairdo on you. But like, you don't mess with my hair. <laughs> but I knew it was the Lord speaking. We're in Mennonite country. <laughs> God was up to something and he was going to use me to get his way. God's up to something. I, I'm trying to tell you something. I know. I'm making deposits in you. Yeah. But he said, I, I heard it so clear. I'm laying there enjoying the Lord. And he said, I was wounded in the house of my friends. My friends. Yeah. Amen. I know that scripture. <laughs> well, you know the experience. <laughs> to know his grace to know his face my friend said she didn't know how to fix her own hair much less mine she really didn't she had this long hair so she wore it up in a bun to put in a bun. I said, what'd you see? Well, you had some little curls here. Well, I don't like the big old you know. Little curls here, little curls here. I wasn't laughing, honey. I said, so what do you say? She said, well, I saw it. And you think God wants you to experiment on me? She said, well, I saw it, Sister Connie. I said, all right, don't give me the marriage, just do it. <laughs> we we're going to a revival and I'm the preacher. <laughs> then she said, I, I volunteered you at the drummer. We don't, the drummer called up and can't make it. <laughs> I played the drums. That's where Grace comes in. You don't have any resistance, come on. There's nothing in front of you to stop God from moving. God's wanting to experiment with some of us to show his power is what I'm saying to you. He's getting ready. Listen, this generation has never experienced the 50s and 60s revival. I remember the 48 revival. All we ever did was went to church. I thought everybody went to church all the time. Seven days a week. I got my stretchings when I was a child. And I thought everybody sang in the spirit all the time until I got out here. Hardly few were doing it. I'm talking to you. Learn to sing in the spirit. Serenade the Lord. Serenade him according to his terms. That's about a boshi. He said, sing with the angels. Sing with the choirs of heaven. Glory, fill your house with the presence of the Lord. Do know your face. What's higher than G? Two flats, three flats, I don't know. Give me up three flats. On the black keys, give me up. To see your face. To know your grace. That's my desire. I didn't plan to go this way. I don't have any plans for I come to this prayer room. I never think about what I'm going to do. You don't know all the notes I write down. I never get to read them. God's already passed my notes by the time I get here. He's doing something else. Come on. These people that come with their notes. It's like God stopped when you wrote that note. Come on, God wants to do something new in this room. He wants some of you to reach up and pluck it right out of the air. Yes. Yes. Reach up and take it. Hallelujah. Yes. Reach up. Yes. Listen, I've gotten free because 
God has used, you know, they when you used to get steaks, they had to tenderize it. Now they already come tender if you want to pay the price. But they had a little mallet that you'd beat that steak yeah. to get it tender. Anybody remember that? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm the steak. You're the steak. That's stretching the cords of the tent that God wants to come Amen. into. Amen. He wants to come in in full boat without measure. Without measure. Oh, we have our friend. Oh, I'm so glad to see you this way. Bonnie. Bonnie just got promoted to a pastor. She had a day. All right. But it didn't happen before she had to get rid of any kind of concern. God set her up on Sunday morning. Can I tell her? And I was kind of surprised when he did that, but usually that's what Pentecostal preachers do. He had a word for a lady in the crowd, and he said, Sister Bonnie, go over and, what did he say, lay your hands on her? Well, when the word came, Bonnie got more excited than a lady hitting the word. She went, yeah! Yeah! And I'm looking around saying, who is that? I'm up on the, another part. And then I looked at the other body, and she said, it's, Bonnie, Freedom Maker, is that your name? I said, that's Bonnie? Quiet Bonnie? <laughs> and I'm over there saying, do it again, Lord. Yeah. We need to hear the sounds of heaven in this sanctuary. Yeah. Yeah. Do it again. So she, a week later, she, I'm going to tell it all. It's okay. She, she, she comes across the room. I said, oh, she's coming to tell me. She's sorry she did that. Before she got to me, I said, don't even say it. <laughs> don't even say it. Don't you repent for one moment for what you did. God's get, trying to get somebody to sound the alarm. Hallelujah. He's going he's gonna to use the most unlikely person. Hallelujah. I traveled with Ruth Halfland, and she never told me what she was going to do before she'd call on me. In fact, I didn't know she was going to call me. I went with her to help her. Kept her clothes, carried her Bible, got her coffee for her, rubbed her feet at night. Then the crowds got bigger, you know, three and four thousand. She said, you give a little testimony first. I didn't even know my name. Come on, I'm trying to tell you. I didn't know my name. And I, I used to cry for the sky to fall in. I pray prayers that you don't want to hear. <laughs> God deliver me, he says I am. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on, somebody, go along and look in the mirror and paint your face up and say, I'm going to be a clown today. Come on. God is looking to demonstrate his power and his foolishness in his people. Wow. And he doesn't want you to be afraid or ashamed. And, and she, Bonnie tried to tell me a couple more times. I said, no, Bonnie, you don't have to make any reasons for what you did. God's been looking for a volunteer. Amen. I said, do you know how many years I've been praying for something to happen in this church? <laughs> oh, gosh, we're probably going all over the world right now. I thought there wasn't anything left of me to be broken, but he's still breaking He's breaking forth. Amen. He's breaking through. Amen. He's breaking out. Amen. Come on, you got to. Gene and Jerry, when they first started here, they've been missionaries down in Central America. Pastors, if you did some pastoral work too. Just a huge If you did it one time, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> now he's singing a new song. She's dancing and waving her flags. You got to get out in those waters. Come on. These, these waters are, are too deep to walk in. He said the knowledge of it is going to cover the earth. You got to let it cover you. You got to have a theatrical move about you in the morning when you get up. Anybody like me, I'm 85. I mean, oh, God, is there anything left in my bones? I sit on the side of the bed and pray screws. God, I need some help every morning. I need oh, some help. Yeah. God, help me. And he said, call unto me. I'm going to 
going to answer you. He said, before you call, I'm going to answer you. And I'm going to show you great and mighty things. And he was a testimony of the greatness of who he is and what he has done. Where's that damn grief? <laughs> you know, they don't want to hear it in the church now, but Marion picked it up and took a million people across the Red Sea. Yeah. <laughs> Give the symbols moving. Yeah. Glory to God. 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 Let him hold your glory. That God wants to do. That's right. That's right. Who said that? I did. You can't make it up. That's right. Science has not discovered it yet. No professor has found whatever he needs to find. church one Sunday morning and I felt the power moving up my feet and I said oh Lord please don't don't do this today. Not, not today but I, I wasn't going to laugh I was going to cry the spirit of the Lord had hit our service we had dismissed and we thought we were going to go home and all of a sudden it was like lightning came into the room our electricity had gone out that night in the church and we I, I'm trying to remember where we had candles now the heat went out and we found this blower and we took the service to a smaller room because it was a big sanctuary in high ceiling and we had dismissed and all of a sudden the spirit of God came in the room again and it was so quiet you could have heard a fly come by <laughs> and all of a sudden I felt the belly perking and I knew there was an intercession and I, I said, oh, Jesus, please. You can't stop it. You cannot stop a volcano when it's about to erupt. Come on, you can't do it. I've seen too many men trying not to cry. I mean, they you know, about to fall down. God's trying to get out. <laughs> he said to me one day, he said, I'm going to set you free. That others will be set free. You don't know how he's going to do it. You get ready for the day. And this is the day the Lord has made. <laughs> Just for you. He's going to demonstrate who he is. Here's what he said to me. You're ready for what I want to tell you? Lord, I might not have this room after today. I'm serious. I'm in Australia. And a lady comes up and begins to prophesy over me. She said, you know that church you go to? She'd never been here. She had a wonderful prophetic word. Some people don't want to, they're afraid to really say what God wants them to say. Yes. God's not through talking. And she said, you know that church you go to? I said, you have to know it. She said, you, Lord, I don't know if I can say this. She said, they don't have what you have. That's what she said. But they're going to get it if they want it or not. My pastor used to put pressure on me and bug me and put pressure on me and I go home crying. And I had to go to him every day repenting. I was so mad at him. 
He said, what's wrong? I said, I'm blah, 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 blah. He said, well, the Lord didn't tell me. Well, I got so tired of saying I was sorry. I stopped thinking that way. And I'm like, who, who does he think he is? I don't know anything. And here he's asking me to do this and do that. And I mean, the schedules were overwhelming. But you see, God had been pruning me from a child. Come on, cutting all those dead limbs off of us. Those dead things that the leaves can come for the healing of the nations yes. in your life. For the healing of your neighborhood. For the healing of the people you walk around in the grocery yes. store. For the healing of all the people that get in your car. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I used to have a woman that, that used to ride with me because the person that drove her died. So we had to take her driver's license away from her because she'd get so in the spirit she'd drive up on the curb and her mom the gas pumps and everything. <laughs> and so I'm taking her to church, but I knew when she got into my car, she had a word for me. And this is how she would start. These people stand up. They're my friends. This is Christy and Ezra. These are my friends. Christy and Ezra. And they know Sister White. And she'd get in my car. And she'd say, well, now it's like this. And she'd start telling me words of knowledge. And she's talking to me. I thought, oh, my goodness. Why is she saying that? She got in my car one day. And she said, it's like this. Just give the IRS what they want, and they'll leave you alone. Give them more than what they're asking. Give them a few dollars more. Well, we hardly had to get the dollars to pay them what we owed them. And she said it to me twice before I realized, oh, am I going to be a hundred ten? And I was. But I didn't do my taxes. Somebody else did. But I had ended up paying $2,000 in interest and late charges for something that I didn't know anything about. But God gave me the money. But she, she, got, she said, it's like this. Just, you know, just give the IRS more than they're asking for, and they'll leave you alone. So why is she telling me this? See, we don't hear. No, listen. We listen, but we don't hear. Right. She said it twice. It took me six months. I'm like, oh, she's talking to me. Now, God never bought, the IRS didn't bother me. She gave me that word in 1996. And they didn't bother me until 2005. Wow. So I had nine years to get it all in order. Come on. You can birth a baby bed faster than that. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. God wants us to hear. Hear the winds that are blowing. Know the swiftness of the Spirit. Amen. Check your identity with the Lord. Open the Bible. Is that, am I working that scripture in my life right now? Am I obeying that scripture? Mm, yeah. He said, check and see if you're in the face. Yeah. To know your face. To see your grace. That's my desire. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I used to think, you know, we came, I came from a Pentecostal background and I thought nobody suffered or praise the Lord any more than we did. I used to thought that all, I don't want to name the religions, that they're, 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 they're going to hell. I didn't say it like that. They're not going to be saved. Didn't have very much love in my heart, you know. God began to prove to me he loved everybody. Come on, and he wants us to love everybody. Now, he didn't say he liked your ways. He said, I love you. But it's our ways that he doesn't like. And he loves us too much to leave us like we are. Wow. Come on, you got to get that. Yeah. He loves you too much. Yeah. Yeah. So he does a little operation here and there. Removing the earthly from our lives. Yeah. Removing the dust of the earth. See, it was dust when he started, but it's going to be gold when he finishes. Come on, you better get this. It's going to be gold when he finishes. How many want that? Now the gold comes from the furnace. <laughs> Every time I used to pass the, my stove when I was a child, my thought was, I don't want to go to hell. Every time I opened the oven door cooking with my mother, I always I don't it's all thought about was an oven. I don't want to go to hell. Hallelujah. Then God began to show me visions of heaven. 
just a little color here first. Our brother that's back there, his name is Ezra. And I didn't know he prophesied. I was seeing all these visions and I hadn't seen him and his wife for years. And I met them this past April, May in Washington. And we meet in the house and he starts prophesying. I said, oh, you've been prophesying. He said, oh, I saw things when I was a child, but I didn't know what I was seeing. See, a lot of people don't pursue the glory when God shows it to them. And what was that? This is that. Come on. Yes. This is that that was spoken to the prophet Joel and to Peter. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is that. They were trying to explain all the noise and the screaming like our sister was doing this. And I came in, she was going, well, well. I thought, man, the fire must be biting her somewhere. <laughs> but no, she got into the song that was being played. She got into the rhythm of the song. See, that's what you got to do. You got to let it cruise through you. Don't take a cruise. Let it cruise through you. The presence of the Lord. The word of the Lord. I'm just going to ask you to pray in tongues for a little bit with me. Just to stir up because God is speaking and he is not stopping to speak especially this morning shena makore te se fo fora ta mamaki roha so ya mara se ya ba ko she ya la mare pro de ama mama so ya la ashin de le le ama mako tre mama ma shin de le be 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 amara se de le 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 ama ya 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 pre se ya la ma sho
my remnant, we are one. Hallelujah. We are one. We are one. Come now into the heavenly places. Sit next to me. Hear what I am saying. I will reveal to you what you know. I will reveal to you what you need to know. I will reveal to you mysteries appointed for this time. you must come up into the secret place and you must fill yourself and stir yourself up because to be my bride is to be constantly in the mood for I am constantly speaking. I am constantly moving. And I am ahead, far ahead of what you see and what you know and what you, what has been revealed around you in your circumstances. Come up higher, my bride. Come up higher. Come up higher. Come up higher. Higher still? Higher still? No. Higher still. For my ways are not your ways. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. You are coming into a season of war that my body is not prepared for. You are coming into a season of war that my body is not prepared for. So it will Strip them and all that they know. It will strip them and all that they know. It will cause them to cry out as these fire of circumstances will burn off every leverage and works of doctrines of demons. I said, it will cause them to cry out as those fires of circumstances will burn off every leverage and works of doctrines and demons. They will either curse God and die, or they will cry out for me, the God of Moses, Elijah, and Abraham, the prophets and apostles. As the earth quakes with the rumblings of me, Yahweh, the Almighty, when the fullness of evil fills the brim of its cup spilling over, yes, the Babylonian cup I will show myself to the world. I said, I will show myself to the world. My remnant bride, the preparation season is short. Very, very short. And this is a season of war, my beloved. Full on and in your face. 
Gather jars, now. Gather jars. And begin to pour what oil you have into them. For darkness is on the horizon, and gross darkness will come in the land, and will displace your personal world as you know it. Come now with weeping and joy. For in this terrible season of war, rejoice that I am your light, my burning ones. I am your light in this terrible season of war. It is on you now. It is on you now. <clears throat> Rejoice. For I am the light of my burning ones. The only burning ones that will pierce through the darkness. As you walk humbly before me. Let it be known and let it be said. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. This day, I am handing you a new sword, my Gideon remnant. And for those who are willing to pay the price, <coughs> my mighty men, sons of God, sons of God, I am handing you the sword of the Lord and my remnant bride. I am handing you the sling and the art of throwing it accurately. Fill your jars of oil. Spend time in my presence. Encourage yourself in me daily. Quicken scriptures into your mind and into your memory that will take you the distance when you don't have a Bible. I'm saying this to you now, my beloved. For I am for you and I am with you and even though thousands upon 10,000 can fall at your side, it will not harm you, those that are close and lay on my heart. I'm looking for my lay down lovers. I'm giving you a new sword. It is the sword of the Lord and the sword of my remnant bride. If you receive this, I will give to you in the coming days the understanding of my ways, the training of my ways to, to wield this weapon according to my word, according to what I deposit in you. Remember the joy of the Lord is your strength. Remember that community, my remnant, is your strength, Ecclesia. Rejoice in this time. And be greatly excited, for I am with you until the ends of the earth. It is a great journey 
that I have set aside for you. And you may be saying, no, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. No, no one's good. No one is good. My blood makes you whole. My blood Amen. is the freedom that you walk in. In these times, my blood, my identity, who I made you to be is your freedom. And no one can take that away from you, my beloved. No one. You can give it away, but no one can take it from you. No one. I am arising in this hour and I am arising in this time. You will see changes in your devotional life. You will see changes in your schedule that I am leaning on you to do. My love gift is obedience. Better than sacrifice. I need an obedient remnant bride. Come. Come, my beloved. I am setting before you a table, a feast of my presence that I have kept from the foundations of the world. I have kept it held close to me, but this table is for now. This table is for you a feast in the presence of your enemies. I present it to you this day. It is yours. It is yours. It will be there all the time. Come and feast on me. When you're exhausted, fall on your face before me and feast on me. I will lavish on you strength, inner strength, and might, and wisdom, and discretion, and discernment. Whatever you need, shoes, because someone stole them. Whatever you need. And my manna presence every morning is fresh. It's special. It's a foretaste of heaven. Feast on it. Feast on it. Feast on it. That is where you plug in. That is where you regenerate. That is the only source for such a time as this. Into all eternity. Lay your head on my heart, my beloved. Let me wrap you in my shalom presence. Nothing is too hard for me. Nothing, 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 nothing. You cannot present to me anything that will be too hard for me to help you and to walk you through. Nothing. So rejoice this day, my remnant bride. I wanted you to know these things now. Time is short. And the lost and the dying are crying out before my throne. <clears throat> Come with me, my beloved. There is honey in the rock, says the Lord your God. I love you. I love you. I love you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Give me a minor key and let's speed it up a little bit, please. Hallelujah. Go for a minor. You ready?
put a little crumbs on it. We kind of lost the spirit here for a minute. 